switch happened in my mind in 2018 while I was away. And that's when I was able to look at my whole career, dissect it, and I started coming up with formulas. And at first, the formulas that I came up with were, if I had won that fight by split decision, I'd be blah, blah, blah this or blah, blah, blah that. The winner of this forthcoming decision figures to take a giant leap forward. The winner by split decision, Raging and And then I immediately put an end to that. I, I thought, man, that's been the problem, is that I've been thinking like a fucking peasant this whole time. How about if I knocked all those people out? It was like getting rebirthed again, you know, having this mentality. I hadn't fought in about a year already, and I was feeling better than ever, willing to take on any comers. And I got to prove to the world that I was who I said I was. I'm the baddest motherfucker on the planet. Hey, Dina. Um, Nick Diaz, Jorge Masvidal. Is that officially on? Is that happening? As far as I know, sitting right here right now, that fight's on. Unless something happened while I was... I've been here since Tuesday. Unless something happened since Tuesday, which is very possible, um, it's on. A fight against Nick Diaz was offered to me. Um, me and my management signed the contract, and then um, something happened with Nick. With negotiations, they fell through, you know, which ended up letting me fight somebody higher ranked anyway, so it was just a blessing in disguise. It was just, you know, God let one door close and like five windows open, you know? The fight with Till was a lot of coincidences happening and the universe wanted me to get that bout, you know? Uh, he had a couple opponents pull out. A couple people didn't want to fight him in England. I already had a couple opponents pull out. We both were having a tough time getting a matchup. So I think I said something in, in Twitter to the degree of like, I heard you're having a, a tough time finding a dance partner. I'm here if you need me or something like that. And to answer back and that's it. That's basically what made the fight happen, you know? A lot of people never want to fight somebody else in their home country, especially a dangerous guy like Till. A lot of people were saying, don't take the fight. I was like, believe me, I'm, I'm more ready than ever. Great fight in a co main, but there was a lot of talk early on of potentially you fighting Darren. It's a little bit of disappointment, honestly, that you're not in the main event. Yeah, 100%. Um, I feel I should have been in the main event. I called out both guys, Master though, and, and Till. Come on, son, let's have it right. Come on. Come on, Leon, don't kid yourself, brother. Come on. You know, you, you know you're, you're not on my level, Till. What? You're, you're not on my level. Shut up. No, 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 no. That doesn't mean anything. I box like an amateur. Fucking amateur. Okay, mate. We'll see when you. No, no, with the chin in there. Your time come. Enough to do every single time. Leon, your time to come. Does anybody have the Wi-Fi password? No, I don't have it. Yeah, boredom had reached its peak there. I had reached to the cell phone device, you know, to like alleviate my mind of this fucking whatever I was hearing. Especially the guy to my left, Leon, I can't understand even a word he's saying sometimes. And he tries to be articulate, just don't talk, just fight, man. And he's in my fucking ear. I just, I couldn't. I was dying to get out of that moment or start fucking a riot already, you know? So I had to break that shit up already. And, you know, those are the things that I care less about fighting, like those press conferences and, and it's like that high school scenario where your mom's fat, and your dad's stupid, and you're going like that. Like, I care less for that, you know? Leave that for the boys. Call me on fight day. I'll show up. I'll make sure I make weight and come to fight. That's what I'm here for. Live from inside the O2 Arena, London, for UFC Fight Night Till versus Masvidal. Tonight is quite possibly the best fight card the city has seen yet. I truly felt great to be there at that moment. My bull of bulls fighting, and I was away for so long, and I just, I knew that I, I had so much good euphoria in me that the night was just gonna be great. It was just too much positive energy going through me. I was just gonna go out there and dominate one way or another. Making a sprint to the octagon, Jorge Masvidal, 
and he took some time off, and I bet that's only made him hungrier to be here. And this is a dangerous fight to take coming off of a layoff. This could be his big ticket to the top. <laughs> Are you ready? Ready? Let's go. Darren Till, the rising star, trying to get his way back to a title shot. Masvidal, one of the veterans of the game. Oh! Early from Till, he floors Masvidal. First left hand landed by Darren Till, puts Masvidal on the canvas. I get dropped here, and this is where you got to be a fighter. So this is when the fighter in you, the dog in you, comes out, where you keep telling yourself, no, I know I'm going to win. It's just a matter of time. Watch. What I told myself at that exact moment is, if this motherfucker lets me up, I'm going to kill him. Masvidal getting back to his feet, but he's not out of pressure. Oh, nice left hook there from Masvidal. Around here, I was ready to go already. Now we see Masvidal moving forward. Oh, Till got caught by two shots there. Oh, nice left hand. Yeah, Darren was tricky. He hit me a lot more than I've been in most of my fights, you know? Last few seconds, Masvidal finds his feet, though. Go ahead. Good first round in our main event. Yogi, the first round is this. Te sorprendió con la con la izquierda. So round number two. I was gonna have to use a lot of my mind to be able to start hitting this kid because he's a real talent, man. Masvidal gets right to work. Oh, nice takedown by Masvidal. Give him some of the wrestling, let him know, hey, I can take you down if I need to, you know? And just that's in his mind just in case, you know, if I need to take him down again or fake a takedown or something like that, you know? Let's go! Nice. Oh, lovely work by Masvidal, catching Till on the attack. Here I'm already synced in on his timing. His punching, I'm seeing it come. In the first round, I wasn't getting a good read on it. In the second round, I was locked and loaded. And boom. Oh! Oh! Oh, my God! What a finish for Jorge Masvidal! Jorge Masvidal gets a massive knockout win here in London. He silences the crowd. What a huge statement for Masvidal. Man, I love fighting, man. It's such a violent sport. It's such a, a beautiful art form. The winner. Uh... So it's, it's just to watch it right, done right, especially when you first seen it up here. And just like an architect would see it up here probably before you put it in pencil and then make the building. It's the same thing I see it here. I go to the gym, I practice a particular move, and then I display it to the world. And it's, it's so fulfilling. It, it feels great to see it come to life. like to silence the O2 arena. I live for that, and that's to take the breath out of everybody so you can hear pin drops. You can feel the electricity when you're coming in there. And uh, it's amazing to, to silence people. I'm doing an interview with the lovely Laura Sanko here. I won the main event in a knockout. You're interrupting my interview for what? To steal my shine, you know? Let's talk about that opening sequence. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> if you, shot, hey, come over here. You're interrupting my interview to punk me out. That's my moment, you know? And then you're there with all your, your whoever they are, your, your friends, your teammates, whatever it is, you know? And you're talking shit to me and stuff like that, trying to cut me off. So I wanted to talk to him. And as I got closer, I saw he had his hands up. So that's telling me it's go time. And he got hit with a three piece and I saw that. And I don't care how many people you're with, you're not gonna punk me. And he had already tried punking me before on online and stuff. And I don't go around punking people, but believe me, ain't nobody taking my ham sandwich from me, you know? Nobody's taking nothing from me. Especially if you cut my interview off after I got the main event. I got to always put your ass in line, man. Those guys are betas. You got to remind them who they are in life. After the three-piece and the soda incident, was there any concern on your part that you weren't going to get this fight and it was going to go to Leon? You no, know, I definitely thought that. I thought Leon was getting the fight for sure. Uh, and, you know, besides that, George is making excuses all, that whole week about why he didn't want to fight me. But George needs to you know, I don't get full on a three-piece and a soda. He better bring the whole damn family meal for that night. My whole thing in coming back into 2019 is to get either the toughest fights or the biggest 
paycheck fights and nothing else. I knew who Ben was. I didn't know Ben's good and stuff. I wanted the toughest fight out, you know, because I was ranked number four. I think at the time Ben was number five, so I wanted number whoever was three, two, and one, you know? Leona Scott was trying to get the fight, but he was like number 12 at the time. Like I said, I'm here to fight the baddest motherfuckers only. You know, so I end up getting Ben Askren, but he actually, he's the one that called for it and begged for it and pleaded for it and this and that. And I knew I had numerous tools that they could bring a lot of pain to his world and very fast, you know. He's showing up with a screwdriver and I'm showing up with a power drill. You know, we got a different ball league when it comes to this fight and stuff. I got a lot of tools, so I was very confident. What's up, how you guys doing? Ben, what does Jorge hate you so much? That's a question for him, not a question for me. I don't know. Do you think it's he, anything he said though? Uh, I don't believe I said anything too bad. I mean, I said I'm gonna beat him, but that's about it. Well, I got a question. All these reporters ask me why you're so mad. I'm kind of curious. You are mad. Yeah, you can't stand me. Why not? No, I, I looked at you. I said I was busy. I gotta go to the bathroom. Come on, answer. Answer all them. <laughs> why are you so mad? I love it. I love the mind games at the end of the day. But when they're good and witty, sometimes, I don't know. Why are you mad, bro? Like. I'm not mad, man. I'm actually really not mad. Maybe annoyed and stuff, you know? What's happening in Vegas? Welcome to the weigh-ins! Because he loves to talk online, right? And he loves to win the press conferences. Let's go, talk now. I'll show you you're a beta and you're not wittier than me and that's nothing. I could talk, I could be talking shit too, you know, I could do it when I need to. You didn't even fight, you stuck your face in crotches. Yeah, keep looking at me like this, the same way you gonna beat them all, baby. You're gonna be looking up wondering what happened. My reading abilities and human beings are pretty spot on, you know? So I'm also doing this to get a lot of reads, you know? And, uh, and I'm good at seeing what I, might, what, what I might think might be a hint or not, you know? Skinny me. It's a little pumped at that moment. At that moment, I'm already like in a set tone, you know? I'm not gonna get any more mad or, un or less mad, you know? And that's it. I'm just more than anything, I'm eager for the next day of competition. I'm just eager to compete already. I'm, I'm kind of sick of all this, you know, training and no action yet. And then we have to do press conferences, numerous interviews, interviews, interviews. And then finally, finally, it's your time to shine. It's, it's your ballroom. The floor is open for you to do as you please. And that is the best moment. So leading up to that moment, you do get like anxiety, like you just want to go. From T Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. The anticipation is absolutely off the charts. Askren, the favorite, as you'd expect. Jorge Masvidal, a live underdog, according to many tonight. All right, so here's the number five ranked welterweight in the world, Ben Askren. He has injected so much energy and flavor into this welterweight division since signing with the UFC. I'm excited to see how he handles it against somebody who's been in this octagon many times, like Jorge Masvidal. Undefeated in the streets and making the walk for his 47th professional fight here tonight, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal! And these guys just flapping gums at each other. Any chance they get. Buddy, you ready? Buddy, you ready? Strike! Oh! 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 Whoa! One of the greatest knockouts you'll ever see! Oh, my Game goodness. Bread. And he has wow. just turned in the fastest knockout in wow. UFC history. Hard work.
pays off. And the fight's over, man. Yeah, he's still out. Nice and easy. Hold on. Okay, that was a brutal, brutal knockout. And everyone in this arena in awe of what they just saw. It was a very reassuring moment. Everything I had done up to that point is working. Let's go fucking harder, man. Let's push more this year than ever. That dude was talking wild, man. You know, I had to show him that there's consequences sometimes. There's some bad motherfuckers out there and you don't want to wake them up. Congratulations, sir. You guys are welcome for ending that dude. Jorge Masvidal, ladies and gentlemen. When I get into the cage, I'm still making last minute adjustments, seeing his body, I'm reading his body language, I'm watching him pacing. I get a couple hints that Tamir, like, pull the trigger right now, first round. You can see, like, the little grin in my face where I'm like, I got you, man. I got you. It's gonna hurt, you know? And, and I just pulled the trigger in full commitment, you know? You can't half ass a move like that because it might land and not with enough pop. Also, I'm kind of showing them all week, I've been walking around like this kind of subconsciously telling them, safety, man. It's a safe zone for you. Wrong. <laughs> I'm going to end your ass as soon as they say, go. because everybody sucked and there was nobody to fight. But Jorge Masvidal had a good last fight. Good last fight. All respect to the man, but there ain't no gangsters in this game anymore. There ain't nobody who does it right but me and him. So I know my man's a gangster, but he ain't no West Coast gangster. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't thinking Nate was going to call me out. Never ruled it out of possibility, because he is fighting at 170, he's fighting Pettis. I didn't think he'd call me out then. I, I really wasn't too, too sure what was going to happen. Not only did he do it in a super respectful, cool way, but he's the definition of a fighter, a guy that just goes through the fatigue, through the pain, and just perseveres on. I got a lot of admiration for those guys as well, you know, not just the athletes or, or the guys that are very skilled, but the guys that are dogs, that are fighters, I, I truly love. So I definitely wanted to just be there. And uh, just what happened, made for perfect TV. Nate calls me out, I'm there in the stands. Bam. What's up, New York? How are you? Here is the Savage from Miami, Jorge Game Red Masvidal. Oh, this was cool. New York, there's always been a humongous support of me. They showed me so much love over there. And this backdrop is just mind blowing. This is for the baddest motherfucker in the game. So I said to my guys, listen, tell me if I'm crazy, but what do you think about us actually having a baddest motherfucker belt? And my guys loved it. And uh, I will physically have that belt when I come back to New York. It'll be ready. I did not know anything about no BMF belt at the time. Did there be one created or not? Obviously, you know, when I found out, I was shocked and I was surprised and I loved it, man. It made even more sense to me. It was just it was like God was putting that cherry on the cake. I love it, man. I'm, I'm ready. Me sitting up here means more zeros in my bank account, more money for my family, so I'm ready for it, man. I've been doing this for a long time. I love to compete at the highest level possible. I love knowing that the opponent is somebody known for kicking ass, man, because that's what's motivating. That suit, though, huh? What's up? I had the Tony Montana suit on. Shout out to the 80s. I'm an 80s baby. So I love that 80s swag and shit, man. I love it to this day. And to me, I think a lot of people that grew up in the era of turbulence in Miami. The movie Scarface was very impactful. 
the cocaine cowboys era, all that stuff, you know? So I was, uh, I was a very young kid growing up through all that. So a lot of those scenes in the movie, it touches a lot of things, you know? Some, some a little close to heart. Um, my dad got incarcerated. I was either four or like right under four. And he got sentenced to 18 years. Uh, he didn't get released till, uh, I don't know, 22, I think, something like this, 21. And I owed him this year. He was one of the pieces to my formula. When I came back, I expressed all these feelings that I had. And he was my biggest advocate. He was my biggest supporter, follower, backer up. He was like, I believe in everything you're telling me, son. Stay on track. We're going to get to where we got to go. My dad's already nervous putting on seatbelts and shit. I was happy to be playing dominoes with his ass on the plane. Yeah, that's the first time we got to play dominoes on the plane ever. <laughs> He's not playing. I was winning at that point when I let him loose. Over, one thing that's cool is that he, he feels like I became a better person, and he means it honestly. He's like, man, I think you're a better person now than you ever were, and it's it's a good thing to hear that from my dad, you know, because I already know I can kick ass. I already know I'm his favorite fighter, duh. <laughs> He's so cute, man. <laughs> All right, he loves me, man. That's my number one. That's my A spoon coon and vice versa. You began sleeping on me, though. Look at his ass. He's ready to go to sleep. Get up. We're working here, man. In 2018, when well, I was coming back, I was going to fight Nick Diaz, and then at the end of the year, I'm fighting Nate Diaz for the baddest motherfucker on the planet. So it felt great to be there at that moment. For the BMF Championship in the welterweight division, please welcome Jorge Mosfino! That BMF belt, man, that's the prettiest belt I've ever seen in my motherfucking life, man. I can't lie. I'm going to put on a show for you guys in New York. Just check me out tomorrow. Jorge Masvidal, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you all tomorrow night. Thank you for coming. Live from an electric Madison Square Garden in New York, New York, USA. The eyes of the entire sports world are fixed on UFC 244 and the historic BMF title fight between Jorge Masvidal and Nathan Diaz. That was just nuts. That Rock, Robert Durant, that these individuals are going to be in my fight. The moment has arrived. The BMF title is on the line. And here now, the man charged with presenting that very belt. So here he is, folks, Nate Diaz. What Nate Diaz is, is a real warrior. Five, four, three, two, let's do it, Jorge. One thing that cannot be doubted is that Jorge Masvidal has arrived in the public consciousness. He's been on this spectacular run. Five-round fight for Turin. Who is the baddest mother effer here? Punch close if you'd like to. Good luck to both. This is real life. This is real. All right, now you ready? Are you ready? Let's go, Joe. I'm ready to go here. I'm just, I'm hoping Nate slips on me. What's up? Where you going? I, <laughs> I was just playing. Come on. Oh, big shot by Masvidal. Let's go. Masvidal, some good shots in the clinch. Oh, oh, he heard him. Nate's hurt. Oh, and Kahlo with a head kick. Nate Diaz trying to survive here early. Big first minute for Masvidal. I'm trying to kill him here. Nate's one tough SOB, man. But my foot hit flush in his face. A lot of guys would have been out cold into the next week. All right, Nathan Diaz back to his feet. Nate's a stud, man, through and through. And it's hard as what gets him there, you know? 
good kick to the body there by Masvidal. That's not happening. You're not taking me down. Looks like that cut is just above the right eyebrow of Nate Diaz. Oh! Diaz undaunted with a big right! Good right hand by Diaz. Masvidal having a lot of fun in there. He's smiling and talking to Nate after that shot. Final 10 seconds. Now the crowd get behind Masvidal. Big left from Nate Diaz. Right. Round one to the 305. Lleva la escuela ahora. Empieza a moverte para en contra la mano. Round two, round two. Let's go, gentlemen. This place is absolutely deafening. Here we go, round two. Oh! Huge right for Gabriel. Oh. And a body shot. I knew Nate was going to come strong. So I had to make sure I let him know I got the bigger weapons on this side. You know, in the press action, I mean, I'm not going to get tired or get discouraged from throwing. I'll keep throwing. Masvidal allows Diaz back to his feet. We'll see the extent to which he has recovered. I also want to let him know I can grapple as well. I can cause damage from here. Oh, big oh. shots. Big shots to the body by Masvidal. I was really starting to find homes for all my shots. I'm noticing he's tired and hurt, so I'm going to take full advantage of it. Masvidal is beating him up. Vamos ahora a movernos, movernos para afuera, movernos. Si él viene, circulea, circula, y después empieza a atacarlo. Round three, nice job by the cut man. Third round, ready, third round, let's go, gentlemen. Oh! Perfect right hand. Oh! Nice left for Nate. Oh! Nasty kick to the body. Oh! He caught him with the right hand there. There's that oh. kick to the body again. He didn't like those right kicks to the body. Those are little baseball bats. He's digging away at your ribs. And I'm a mean motherfucker. When I, once I get in and I find a home for something, I'll keep doing it and doing it. I don't get discouraged at all. Masvidal is controlling the pace. Yeah, crazy output here on the ground. Oh, big elbow from Masvidal. Masvidal, big shots from the top. This BMF title fight thus far. And crazy damage on that right side of Nate Diaz, man. Nate's face is open wide. That cut is nasty now. Doctor in to check on the cut of Nate Diaz. This could be it. The doctor's waving it off. Masvidal was brilliant tonight. That was just a brilliant performance by Masvidal. I'm ready to go. I'm a dog. Now, if the referees want to save your eyeball, that's on them, man. Because if it was up to me, I would have took that and whatever I had to take home with me, you know? And now, the winner of the B. It didn't even exist until this year, made from what? The Rock wraps it around my waist. My favorite action star, got Roberto Duran right here. Got all my favorite people that have taken me to this moment. Mike Brown, Paulino Hernandez, Jesus Gallo, Ibrahim Cowa, they're all with me. These are some of my favorite people in the whole world in one place together, celebrating the best moment, you know, one of our best moments. I was one hell of a moment. It's just letting me know, keep doing what you're doing. You know, we got a lot more work to do. But I'm in the right path, I'm in the right direction. Get a close up of it. You ain't gonna see another one like no, you're not. over in your mud off looking life. <laughs> and I'm taking it all in, and all this craziness and sacrifice, not being with your family, you know, you get it paid back with, and, and then some in these moments. <laughs> That's a good ass picture. Right now, I tell it to you, you're like, yeah, man, for all you the BMF. But a year ago, you wouldn't have agreed with me, more than like, you would have been like, oh, this guy lost his mind out there in the jungle smoking some wild shit. And my dad was firmly behind me. So 2019, it's, it's me and my dad, my, my team, just everything aligning and us taking care of it.
I'm the baddest motherfucker without a doubt, but I knew that before I ever had that belt. Damn it, too. Ben Askren, Nate Diaz, it just keeps telling me, I do have the right formula, and it's amazing to see it fulfilled. It's amazing seeing years of years of years of work that I've been in this business come to me almost overnight. I have a lot of work to do. I still have a lot of ground to cover, but I'm headed down the right path. Because when I close the book on this chapter in my life, I will be the most violent combat athlete that ever walked on this earth.